Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is a nationally syndicated radio host, a comedian, an actor, a motivational speaker, and an all-around just amazing guy. Mm -hmm. But one of the things he's most proud of is being the adopted son of Mr. Willie Moore Sr. and Mrs. Flora Moore, and he's spreading his powerful message. Mm -hmm. I told my mom, I said, those kids across the street, they were singing a song, and mama, they said that, that I'm adopted. Mama, am I a dog? She said, son, you are not a dog. You were chosen. A lot of kids in this neighborhood, their parents had them accidentally. But I fasted, I prayed, I saved, and I did exactly what I was supposed to do to make sure that you could be raised in a loving home. So you are a chosen child. You are my supernatural child. And don't you forget it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. This month, in honor of National mm -hmm. Adoption Month, he now adds to his list an accomplishment, author of the new book, You Belong Here, an Adoptees mm -hmm. Love Story. Please welcome our good friend, Willie Moore, Jr. Yeah. 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 That's your baby. baby. That's your baby. Did you see my baby? I got you. Oh, your baby's so, so beautiful. beautiful. Hello, <laughs> Willie Moore. Hey, how you doing? It's such a pleasure Have to a see you guys. Oh my goodness, it's always good to see you, No, it sir. is always an honor. Th thank you for having me, absolutely. it's all good. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. S seeing that video always break me down a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. good. It brings yeah. tears to your eyes. Yeah, it, it yeah. does, really does. Yeah, yeah. very yes. emotional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that you wrote this book and yeah. you're calling it an adoptee's love story. Mm -hmm. It is. Why is it a love story? It's the greatest story ever told, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was adopted, honestly, by three ex-sharecroppers. And I know a lot of people don't know what ex-sharecroppers are, but um, it's like slavery, mm -hmm. um, when African-American people didn't have the opportunity to, you know, go out and have the resources, mm -hmm. they just stayed on the farm, mm -hmm. and they did what they were supposed to do. My dad is 87 years young. My mom is, well, she's been 35 the last 35 <laughs> years. <laughs> don't crack beige, don't age. Right. Um, but being adopted by two ex-sharecroppers, mm -hmm. we didn't have a whole lot of money. Yeah. Um, grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, where the median income was $17,000, but the fabric of who we who we are, mm -hmm. it just was full of love. And yeah. I was able to become a successful person in life because yeah. of the sacrifice that these two people have made for Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you didn't know what adoption was. And I then did. And then you found out. So do you think you would have, you wished you could have found out sooner than later or was the, that was the perfect time? You know what, I was seven years old. Okay. So I, I couldn't really grasp it. They always say I had an old soul. But uh, thanks to my mother and father, they never discredited my, my biological mother's decision. Okay. They said mm -hmm. that she wanted you to have an IE normal life and so when I was coming back from Ethiopia I was like Lord like you've given me television you've given me radio you've given me all of this all of these accolades but like what can I do to serve my children mm -hmm. and so I began to write this book I picked up my mom and dad we drove all the way to Memphis Tennessee um, and just start talking about these stories and so I wrote seven amazing love stories that are definitely gonna help parents whether you adopted or you didn't right. adopt it's really gonna help parents with teenagers to be able to communicate better huh. yeah and if you're an adoptee it's gonna show you that you really belong here you're not an accident you can go out there and win on purpose and yeah, I just want right. to be the example yes, yeah absolutely right. yeah. I have a question yeah uh, if I adopt a children tomorrow yeah when is the best time to tell them that they are adopted yeah. and what is that conversation like yeah you know what I would start introducing the word mm -hmm. as early as possible mm -hmm. you know for me I asked my mom um, was I a dog because that's the only thing mm -hmm. I'd ever seen in mainstream media to be adopted mm -hmm. but if you have like a three-year-old four-year-old mm -hmm. start introducing them to the word so it's not a stigma yeah and it's not a bad word like adoption is the most beautiful thing ever like adoption yes. equals love mm -hmm. and so when when we look biblically at what adoption was this was actually God's idea mm -hmm. in Ephesians it really tells mm -hmm. us that God adopted us into sonship so this was God's idea he, he literally adopted us into sonship through Jesus Christ mm -hmm. so if it's God's idea like if he's given us an idea to create a TV show we own it right but if he's mm -hmm. given us the idea of adoption and God's tugged on your heart it's time to give a child an opportunity and your mm -hmm. mom said you were a chosen supernatural mm -hmm baby and that yeah. still continues to resonate with you to this day but you just reached you talked you, you, you talked about the stigma of adoption how do we take yeah. that out yeah. of it being quote unquote so bad you know what this is the start of it right you belong to your book <laughs> seven stories and adopt, adoptees love story I just think a narrative changing the narrative like of course everybody has issues you're gonna have issue with right. your teenager if, mm -hmm. if he or she's not adopted That's right? right however yeah. it's something special when you give a child an opportunity I always tell people my mother 
to never have to work another day in her life, mm. right? Like, I grew up saying that my mom is definitely going to get a return on her investment. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't a guy out there, like, when everybody was hustling, selling dope in the neighborhood, that mm -hmm. wasn't my thing, because right. I never wanted to d disappoint the people who sacrifice so many, much. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I talk about it in the You Belong Here book. Um, just so many great mm -hmm. stories to give parents the encouragement, especially if you have a teenager. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, you were very fortunate in yeah. choosing your forever family, and yeah. I love that. What about the kids who don't end up in good homes or or the kids that are not adopted at all. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's why I titled it You Belong Here. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are, the moment that you accept where you are, you can start building from there. Mm -hmm. Like our creator was creative. And so the one thing, no matter where you are, you can't change mm. your imagination. Yes, like sir. Tyler Perry says it all the time, that he set up under that house and he imagined where he could be. So if you're in a tough spot, just know that it's all a part of your mm -hmm. bigger testimony. Yes. You'll get a chance to step on stage and to speak from an authentic place. Like I speak about adoption from an authentic place mm -hmm. and I've traveled to Ethiopia. I travel all across the world in <coughs> introducing this new option to tribal countries. Yes. And it's, it's really cool, who would have thought a dude from the neighborhood, mm -hmm. where the dipl my diploma read, Ferguson Florissant School mm -hmm. District, yes. where the median income is $17,000. Like, I'm from the neighbor neighborhood, right? Yeah, <laughs> so right, right. That they would take this thing, I would honor my parents, and honoring them is a direct correlation mm -hmm. to my success. Yes. And that's what I want to teach parents, right. teach kids, right? Well, how do you think being adopted has shaped you as a father now? Mm -hmm. You know what? This year I started counseling because I'm very protective. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very protective of my children. I had never seen anybody in my biological family until this year. So when it comes to my children, I always hold them very, very mm -hmm. close. Like you look on my Instagram, Facebook, whatever, like that's my trophy. Right. Like for most men, business is their trophy. What they accomplish is their trophy. But I was 16 years old saying to myself, one day I'm going to have somebody mm -hmm. that looks like me. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Of course, this yeah. is the end of National Adoption Month. What's the overall message? with mm -hmm. this book or and what you want people to to know about this journey. Indeed. See, right now there's 123,000 <laughs> children right. who are in yeah. foster care, right, yeah. and are available for adoption. 23,000 mm -hmm. of those children, they age out at the age of 18, and some of them never get the opportunity mm -hmm. to say, mom or mm. dad. Mm. And so God's been tugging on your heart and you know that he's been tugging on your heart. You got extra bedrooms that you just putting clothes in. Mm -hmm. Like there may be an opportunity for you to give a child an opportunity to have a home. Listen, my mom ain't never got to work again another day in her life because of the decision she made to adopt me. So I'm always telling people around the world, you can get a Willie. Yeah, you can get a Willie. Yes, you can do it. So, right. so like literally do it and make sure you pick up the book, youbelongherebook.com. Seven love stories. It's only a hundred pages. My tagline is keep it 100. This is a first of a series, so there's going to be a lot of different 100 page books that's going to change your life forever. Well, he yes. did his own yeah. tag out. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. <laughs> that's the radio, really? that's the radio. Sorry, you know I get it. <laughs> Willie Moore Jr., everybody, give it up. Give us some love yeah, to Cynthia Bailey. Yes, that's right.